Netcasts you love from people you trust. This is Twit. Okay, so let's talk about OBS. This is the Open Broadcaster Software. This is a free alternative to something like XSplit. While it also focuses on live streaming, it has the ability to do local recordings. It also records straight to H.264 files, which is a little bit smaller file size with a also slightly lower quality depending on the bitrate that you choose. Note that during the recording of this uh, video, we are still on beta uh, 0.52b. So some things may have changed if you watch this video in the future because, hey, we're still on beta. So when you open OBS, you are greeted by a simple yet very familiar looking interface. Uh, yes, this looks a lot like XSplit, and your knowledge from XSplit will uh, translate over to OBS. Now, first you have to add a scene to uh, this window, and that you do that just by right-clicking and adding a scene, and you can name this. So, if I want to get really creative, I could name this scene too, and that's what I'll go ahead and do. Now, over here in the corner, uh, you have your sources. So, before we would add a source, um, but here, you just right-click again, choose Add, and you have a lot of options. Now, you might be saying, this is exactly like XSplit. Well, there's a few things that are missing, like I can't play a movie file at the moment, and a few other things like that. Let's go ahead and add uh, this uh, game capture option. We will name this Minecraft. And then you can choose between what applications are open and which applications it will pull from. So you can see this Minecraft uh, 1.6. So go, go ahead and choose OK. And I know that I'm doing this wrong um, because, well, first, in order to see what you are going to stream, you need to preview your stream, which is a second button right here. So yes, I know that I am doing this a little bit wrong because Look, it's so tiny, and you can't drag this around like you can in XSplit. First, you have to hit Edit Scene, but in this scene, you can see that it's kind of weird. That's because I've set the default resolution to my screen resolution. What you have to do is right-click, go into Properties, which is the same properties you saw before, but I forgot to click this Stretch image to screen button. So now that I've done that, it will stretch it to the screen. And once I'm in the edit scene uh, sort of, uh, you know, argument there, I can uh, move this around just like I would expect. Of course, you can add all the things that I did before. So let's go ahead and choose a video capture device. Go ahead and choose OK. This is the webcam that I have. Let's go ahead and choose OK. And there, hey! Hello, everyone. Now let's go ahead and squeeze this down to the corner, just like I did with the other one. And of course, this is almost exactly like XSplit. And now, on to some of the settings. Here in the general, of course, you can choose your language. But in the encoding, you get to choose what bit rate uh, you encode things at and what codec you choose. Under the broadcast settings, you will choose either the live stream or file output only, which you can choose your file uh, path and what hotkey to start uh, recording at. If you go back to live stream, you can see that there's a bunch of different services that they use. Each one of these services will give you the information that you need, so like the uh, stream key and, and all of this stuff. It's also saying that my OBS settings are not optimized for Twitch and Justin TV, so please reset my key, uh, keyframe interval to two seconds, which makes a lot of sense because they already know a little bit about Justin TV. So over here in the video, uh, I get to choose my video adapter, my screens, and the base resolution, which is why this was so small when I was trying it earlier, is because the base resolution was set to 1080, and this window, this thing is not at 1080, so of course it's going to shrink it down, unless if I choose to stretch it out. Next over in the audio, I can choose the, the desktop audio, which is the speakers and the microphone. Luckily, you get to choose this, unlike in Fraps, and you can choose a push to talk button and a few other settings. Over in Advanced, uh, you have more settings like choosing an X.264 uh, setting or something like that. And then you 
even have a microphone noise gate. So if your microphone is not making a specific threshold of decibels, it will keep it muted um, if for some reason you have a loud mic. So if you had chosen to record locally to your desktop, all you have to do is click the start streaming button to stream and save all of those recordings and then click the stop streaming to well, stop. So next, let's cover all the things that you can record your game with on the Macintosh. That'll happen in the next video.